the control by this world, friendship with the world is enmity against God. You can't uh, follow your family in their ways of sin. Now you would notice about these churches in the book of Revelation and the scenes that John has recorded. Everything's supernatural as John recorded it. There's nobody today getting anything like that and I'm not saying there should be. I don't know. But I do know this. We, should, we are meant to be acting and living supernaturally in our churches and in our Christian experience. And of course what hinders us is that we live on the natural plane too much. Now we have to live on the natural plane up to a point. We have to sleep, eat, maybe work, whatever. But we should not be engrossed with those things to such an extent that they become more important than our spiritual and supernatural walk with the Lord. Now this particular incident is happening to every one of us that I'm going to relate that's found in Revelation chapter 12. It's happening in your life. It's been happening all your life and particularly since you became a Christian. To be a Christian is not to follow a bed of roses. It's to have a bed of thorns. Now the glory's there, but so are the thorns. In Revelation 12, it speaks of the dragon, Satan. There's a dragon in every pagan worship on earth. Satan's in every paganism that you can be found and that there always was. And Satan's in the Christian church. When I first went to Indonesia, the Indonesians used to get real excited once in the meeting. All together in the Indonesian, they'd tell Satan to go. Now I told some of them they were wrong. They were right, I was wrong. I didn't understand the power of Satan that gathered with the saints many a time. That is in lives of saints most of the time. Now he's not in their lives, he's just around attacking. Didn't Peter say, the devil as a roaring lion is walking around all the time, having a look to see who he can capture. That's the, the children of God. He watches all the time to see if you have an opening for him or his demons. They're attacking all the time, as you would find in the book of Ephesians. All the time, they were attacking that church. Well, in the end of chapter 12, it says about the dragon. And we have dealt with this in our videos. Then the dragon was angry with the woman, the church, that particular church, which was the early church of, of, of the Hebrews, of the Israelites, of Jerusalem. And then the dragon got angry with the church because she was taken up to Pella. That's how we read it. But the devil went to make war on the rest of the children who were the children of the Jesus Christ. And those who keep the commandments of God and told the testimony of Jesus. Do you witness to anybody? Do you talk about Christ? Do you talk about the Bible? Do you pray and use your voice to the Lord? Yeah, you're under attack. Now I used to always say to the charismatics who said they were always under attack, oh, they're wrong. They were wrong and they were right. They were wrong in that they put everything that happened in their lives that was wrong to an attack of Satan and it's not but they were right in that they were having attacks of Satan. We have been too glib about this verse. It says very clearly, he's out to make war on the rest of the children of Jesus Christ and those who keep the commandments of God 
and the testimony of Jesus. Now that was supernatural. It affects you physically, can do. Affects you spiritually, can do. Affects your doctrines, can do. Affects what your church does, all the time it does. Some form or other. In some form or other. If it's not a wrong doctrine, it's immorality of somebody. Or it's worldliness. Or it's selfism. Or it's humanism. Or it's prosperity. Whatever. Or it's war. Natural war. Or it's martyrdom. But of course, that attack is suffered as a glory when a person has to suffer that. I think it was Peter who said uh, something like suffer as the glory when you fall into, or James, when you fall into those situations it can be a glory because you go through in sailing colours, in, in your vessel is flowing with the wind of the Holy Ghost and you, and you sail th right through it into heaven in that case. Now that's supernatural because it tells us in the book of Ephesians and everybody should listen to this verse because it applies to every church and every believer every denomination, everywhere the true word of God is preached. If the true word of God is not preached, it's already taken them captive. But he's trying to take everybody captive at his will. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, says Paul, to the church in Ephesus because they were experiencing this. And it comes down to us today as canon of scripture. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. This translation's power, that's not, that's not totally correct from the Greek word. It's might, which is a different word. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Everybody has the wiles of the devil against him. Every believer. From babyhood to childhood to teenage years to adulthood all through life. All through life. The wiles of the devil are against us. How are we going to defeat it? But first of all, we have to stand against it. We have to recognize it for what it is and stand against it. That's supernatural. You can't fight the devil unless it's supernaturally fighting in some form. It's impossible. And as a matter of fact, it says, after the, it lists the accoutrement or the armament, it says, pray in the Spirit at all times. You have to pray, but it's in the Spirit. It's in the supernatural area. It's in praying in other tongues in particular. You pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. Now, of course, you don't get up in church and everybody... It's, it's, it's in order for the whole church to get up and pray in other tongues together. But if somebody's required to pray in English, one person gets up and prays in English. Although the, many of the American Pentecostals used to say, used to hear their preachers say, everybody pray together in English. God's not deaf. What they did miss, they should have been saying, everybody pray in other tongues. They never said it. Well, I say it because the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Pray in the Spirit so it has to be a supernatural 
action against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against people. It's not against enemies of blood and flesh. They're not our real enemies. Now, if you're a man, or even a woman these days, it can come to you through blood, through blood and flesh. If it's sexual, even if it's on TV, even if it's in an advertisement, that's from blood and flesh, but it's what's behind the blood and flesh. That person, now unknowingly maybe, has lust. And sometimes it is a struggle for Christians, even in that area. But let us realize the struggle is not blood and flesh in us against blood and flesh in them. The struggle is the Spirit of God working in our spirits to subdue our carnal nature and to take a stand in with, the work, with the accoutrement given here and in the Holy Ghost prayer against every attack of Satan. Because we're fighting against rulers in the atmosphere. They're in the atmosphere of our world. They're not in heaven. They're not in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Now in verse 1 he said, you were dead through trespasses and sins in which you once lived. We all lived in sin and trespasses in some form. Following the course of this world. Now the Apostle James said, friendship with the world is enmity against God. Following the course of this world. Following the ruler, Satan, of the power of the air the atmosphere. The spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient, whether they're Christians or otherwise, certainly amongst all the sinners. Satan rules the life of all your friends who are not saved. A bit horrifying, isn't it? See, that's supernatural because you can't see it happening. You might see the results. He's working in your family that's not going, not going full out for God in some way. And if you're part of your family is not saved, they're controlled by Satan. They're controlled by this world. Friendship with the world is enmity against God. You can't follow your family in their ways of sin. And if by being with them in their ways of sin, means you're rubbing shoulders with too much sin, you can't spend much time with them. This is after they grow up. If, if they're your children when you get them, when you're a Christian, well, generally, they follow the Christian way. Now it says in chapter 6, going back to chapter 6, that the rulers up there, Satan and his demons, the giants who become demons. The Nephilim who is still around. The giant spirits that are still around. For our struggle is against those rulers, against those authorities. You see, there's rulers up there, there's authorities up there, and there's supernatural powers. Supernatural rulers, they're supernatural. This, tra uh, this translation says cosmic spiritual powers. Cos cosmic spiritual, sorry. He says cosmic powers of this present darkness. You know that verse in, the, in, the, in Isaiah where it says something about to them who sit in darkness has the light appeared, meaning Jesus Christ. I just used to think, oh, that's the darkness of sin. You know, without giving it much thought. Oh, no. It's the darkness of sin blighting everybody. 
but it's the darkness of the demon forces and of Satan that control people that are controlling the world that we cannot see. And they're controlling the world from up there. We're seated higher. We're seated higher than the atmosphere or the sky. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So to defeat those powers, we have to descend, <laughs> in a way. We have to ha make a descent from a heavenly situation with a heavenly power to come against the supernatural powers that are ruling from the sky and the atmosphere above us all around the world. We descend. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. Means we've got more power. Means we've got heaven. We just have to believe it and live it. And then it says, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, now that doesn't mean in heaven itself. It means in the heavenly places where we're trying to live. They come in and affect us. You know, sometimes you can go to a meeting and we feel you're in heaven. And sometimes, as people have said to me, and I guess I've experienced myself, though not particularly often, but yes, I would have experienced it. You come home and heaven disappears at the door. Well, it's not meant to disappear. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God. Stand and put something on. Fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Look, you've got faith, you've got truth in your heart and in your mind and in the Word. Put it around you. Make it yours. Defend yourself with it. Then it says, put on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. Not our own righteousness, which is of 30 legs. The righteousness of Christ. Put it on again. Because it says in Ephesians, in, in uh, I think it's in chapter 4, where it says, or it might be chapter 5, it says, uh, put off the old man, throw him off by faith. Put on the new. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's the new man, by faith. And then it says, uh, and shoes for your feet, put them on, whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. In other words, your feet have to have shoes full of the gospel on them. In other words, your heart has to be full of the gospel. In other words, your heart has to be full of the New Testament and any other part of canon scripture that is missing from our Bible. Find it and get it in your heart. Then it says, With all these, take the shield of faith. We have to use faith. We must not doubt how often we are tempted to, how often we do. We must exercise faith. Faith is not in our emotions. Faith is in our spirits. If we follow our emotions many times, we go wrong. We have to disregard our emotions that have to do with the old man and throw them out by faith and follow the faith against, the, against Satan and the carnal nature. Because with that, with all of these, we can quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I want to say to every believer, you get arrows. You will get arrows. And the arrows are demons. And you are not demon possessed. But they attack. I used to have a pastor who used to say, 
A bird can fly over your head, but he can't make a nest in it. So what he was really saying was, I don't know if he thought it this way, but I can see it. If a demon does come into your life and attack, you can get rid of him. You don't have to leave it there. Many people leave it there. That's why a pastor falls into adultery. He leaves it there. He makes a nest. And that's why the church gets into wrong doctrines. Because the evil doctrines come into the church and they listen and accept it. Year in and year out, as has gone on for centuries, they accept it. And there's the nest of evil doctrine, the demons, squiggling and squirming in people's lives and people don't know it. Not pretty, is it? No. What goes on behind the scenes is not pretty. But then it becomes pretty when we do it, take all these things and take the helmet of salvation. That means deliverance. Deliverance from wrong doctrines. Deliverance from all the attacks of demons and Satan. Deliverance every time it happens. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We need every bit of Word of God we have in our Bibles and every bit of the canons that are missing because they threw them out. And it says to pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert. Keep alert. The arrows of the evil one are going to come against you. Keep alert. The demons will attack. Keep alert. Satan's walking around. Keep alert. And most of the time, we don't keep alert because we don't realize it's happening. We're so taken in by the doctrines of our church and the teachings of our churches where they are greatly wrong. And so he says, always persevere in supplication for all the saints. We should pray for one another more than what we do. So we're in a supernatural existence whether we realize it or not. And for us today, we need to do what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6. And as the only example in our New Testament, among the New Testament churches acting, is the seven churches, as they act and listen, that's our only example. We have to be continuously overseen and overwhelmed by heavenly matters, heavenly actions, heavenly experiences. We have to live supernatural Christian lives in the Holy Ghost. Forget about our women's co committees and all our picnics and all our sports events. Forget about the raising of money. Forget about teaching the people to be highly educated and prosperous. I followed that course of higher education with my children, for which I'm sorry. You just follow what others are doing in the church. We have to ignore what's going on that's wrong and have nothing to do with it. We have to do this. We have to get outside of the church decrees. But you had better make sure you've got your feet firmly established on the Word of God. Never leave a church unless you are that kind of a mature Christian. You need a church. We cannot go outside of the churches. If you have to be in a church, it's wrong. Stick with what's right and stand up against the wrong. You need to have the Lord Jesus talking to you, leading you, guiding you, 
using you, the great I am, the Spirit of Christ within you, the Holy Ghost moving continually. We have to make our abode in Christian things, in supernatural things, in Bible things, in prayer things. Not in the secular and the political all the time. Not in the educational all the time. We have to cultivate a deeper walk with Jesus Christ. And we have to unlearn everything we've learned about Israel in our churches and about the Jews that is all wrong. And learn it and get the truth because they are following Satan. We cannot be in bed with those who follow Satan. Whether they are fellow religionists, as we think, or whether they are worldly people, we cannot be in bed with them. Friendship with the world is enmity against God. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we need to be supernatural in the Holy Ghost as they were in years gone by and doubtless there are still many today who are in that position. Let us be part of them. Even if we never meet them, in spirit, let us be part of them. In the name of Jesus, amen.